Namaste, beautiful yogis. Today we are going to be talking about self love. Self love. I feel that. Now, my opinion will be my thoughts on this are going to be unconventional. And just listen to me with an open mind. Uh, because I feel that my projection on the internet or what people perceive of me is not a hundred percent um coinciding with who i am i i have mentioned this before but what you project in the world is your medium quality it's the top of your chart in astrology so no matter who you are your sun and your other alignments your medium quality would be what people see in the public sphere of you, so in your career, or, um, mostly that's what people would perceive. So I feel that I'm perceived a little softer than I am. My view on self love is it's become self love has become a buzzword, it's become self help buzzword. Right now, everybody's talking about how to love ourselves, how to pamper ourselves, how to work on healing ourselves, how to do so much about ourselves that we um, transcend our past. I feel that this is one of the biggest traps um, um, or one of the biggest co-opted movements that has really, really a noble thing in the base of the movement and it's been perverted once it spreads into the social sphere. It becomes perverted, the message becomes perverted. What do I mean? Um, I feel that as long as we are stuck in that stage of um, thinking about the self and trying to love ourselves, trying to change ourselves, trying to improve ourselves, we and also thinking about the past, being victimized, we will not heal. I am not denying the, the necessity of this uh, part. That's a stage of healing as long as it doesn't last a long time that's maybe a necessary stage for some people it could be necessary for some it is not but getting to the stage of thinking about your past being feeling victimized etc has to be just a transitory stage as long as we're in that stage there will be no healing because <clears throat> there is no um, self empowerment in that stage. Self-love from a, I think, Buddhist perspective, I don't have Buddhist belief, by the way, but from a Buddhist perspective, I think I was discussing last night with my partner, John Carlos Castaneda talks about it. Self-love requires us to forget about ourselves. So basically, as long as we have inner dialogue, we cannot really transcend our physical petty mind and, and it sounds like a very difficult thing but really it isn't you forget about yourselves when you're talking to a friend maybe when you're gardening maybe when you're working out maybe uh, when you're doing yoga maybe Every, everybody is different but i'm just giving you examples of when you don't think about yourself so when you're just cleaning and just going about your day uh, when you're playing with children, when you're doing something you love, when you're making art, you forget about yourself, you transcend that that stage. Thinking about yourself and feeling low, like feeling um, doubt or doubting yourself or feeling like you're imperfect, like you have to change yourself, is a sign of a really strong ego. And most people think, no, when I feel low and down, that's me having no ego actually it is very that is the illusion um a child that has a very innocent connection to their uh, self they will adore themselves they think they're the coolest they think they're the cutest they think they're the most adorable that is the most humble state to be and there's many levels i can explain this in one of them is if you are judging yourself the the energy of judgment is the energy of judgment. If I tell you um, that is not a good thing, that is a low energy to judge others, you would agree. But if I tell you it's absolutely the same energy to judge yourself, you'll be 
taken aback. No, I'm I'm trying to improve myself, etc. No, you're putting a lot of thought into yourself. You're creating a lot of self-importance. You're forgetting your space and place in the universe. You're also forgetting that the universe is not judging you, that the na nature is not judging you, that anything wise around you is not judging you. So you are taking precedence. You're being very self-important that you think that you can be more enlightened than the universe and you are in a position to judge yourself. Another thing, so you're taking self-importance. Another thing is you think that you're so important that the world around you cares about what you are. That's the other aspect of it, point two. When you judge yourself, you place so much self-importance that you feel that all your qualities are of such importance. You have to, when you forget about that self-importance, when you become humble, you would accept every aspect of yourself as perfection because you will not expect perfection, but you will find perfection in the chaos of existence, in the chaotic nature of yourself. And also, if you die tomorrow, if you become dust, it will be okay. So, you're okay, there is no mistake, there is nothing to correct, there is nothing to change. We are forever evolving, change is part of our um, existence, but it's not something we need to constantly mentally will. We are constantly evolving and actually our evolution is much um, sped, much more sped up if we actually forget about ourselves. So the most humble thing to do is to love yourself unconditionally, to accept every aspect of yourself and As you love yourself, you forget about yourself, you become not self-serving, thinking all day about how to heal yourself, how to heal the past, how to um, evolve, how to pamper yourself, how to, be, to have a better um, productivity schedule, how to, all of those things are a lot of self-involvement. So my point is, the moment we let go of self-judgment, the moment we become empty, the moment we lose our inner dialogue, we forget about, our, about ourselves, we, we become loving, we love ourselves unconditionally, but at the same time we forget about ourselves because we are gonna be dust and we're dust in the universe. Our self-importance is not coinciding with the actuality of our existence. We live in a universe with a lot of many more dust particles. They're very important because once you for, once you shut down your inner dialogue, your uh, human mind, you actually tap into something profound. You tap into the universal mind. You become part of the universal mind. And when you, um, if you are to disappear, you will still be part of that universal mind. You will still be part of something much deeper, much bigger. So my thoughts on self-love, basically I was reading an article, someone sent me a friend sent me an article, it was get over yourself, that is it, I don't have a soft um, uh, take on self-love, I think people that are obsessed with it have to let go of it, it's, it's the first stage, it's the lowest stage of self-love is wanting to love yourself, is wanting, wanting to improve yourself, when you listen to people talking about changing themselves, becoming better, loving themselves, and all of that, you will hear, all you will hear if you're listening actually to what they're saying, you will hear me, 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 I, I, me, 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 I, I, they will not tell you, today my most important thing was to make someone's day, my most important thing was to experience joy through feeling someone else's joy through evol evolving, through serving the universe, or, or things like that. You would just hear a lot of... <sighs> I've heard so much of it, it just kind of scares me sometimes about the direction of social media, but that's why I'm, I'm not doing this talk. And I don't know if I'm making all my points, because 
For me, it is very difficult to sit and talk about philosophy with the camera. I like to discuss it with someone that argues back, someone that has an opposite opinion or devil's advocate because it, it deepens the discussion. All in all, self-love is get over yourself. That is really true self-love. There is no self-love in wanting to change, wanting to improve, uh, pampering yourself. That is not self-love. That is the that is self-obsession, and in self-obsession, as it, the word implies, it is a it is not an evolved quality. There is nothing evolved about thinking about yourself too much, even trying to uh, spiritually evolve. Even that is a selfish desire. So we have to evolve past this. We have to move past this. There is no true happiness in thinking about yourself. When you sit and think about yourself, you will realize, oh, one day I will die, or one day I will, uh, you know, age, I will, I don't know, be injured, I'll be, I'll be less than what I'm now, and it's just a lot of anxiety in that because you get too caught up, you too connected to the physical you, you don't connect to the real you, to your real value, uh, especially when you connect your value to your qualities or to your looks, then you get really caught up in that, you really forget your real value. You're, when you connect to your real you, you will love yourself. You completely adore yourself because you are part of this profound universe. You are just a, a part of something so big, so profound, so beautiful. And you're part of it. You're just as big, as profound, as beautiful. The way you're nothing, the same way you're everything. And when you realize that, there is true self-love. Now this term self-love has been this term, that term of profound self-love has been taken into the social media and popularized and co-opted and it's all about being more productive, meditating more. It sounds so good, it sounds so innocent and so beautiful that it's very easy to fall for. It's it's a lot of thinking about yourself, about how to love, how to be a better person. And it, it's a, it's it's almost a trap basically. So that is my point. Just there is no self-love in that. There is no self-love in trying. Trying to change yourself is not understanding your profound nature. It's, it's, it's denying your profound nature. It's saying that there is something um, innately wrong with you. You have to constantly change it. And as I said, there is duality in that statement, or there is a lot of duality in everything I'm saying because we are all forever changing. But for us to see them, we'll change. Will it? Mentally, will it? Is denying our infinitely divine or infinite divine um, a particle of the universal mind nature. We are a drop in the ocean. We are a drop in the ocean, but we're the ocean. When we drop in the ocean, we dissolve into the ocean. We're our own entity, but we're also the ocean. Uh, that's those are my thoughts on self-love. What are your thoughts on self-love? I am a little bit sickened by all the social... Uh, it's all these social um, media movements, they're all done with the ulterior motives. The, the base of it is very noble and from there it's copied, deteriorated and perverted. So that it can serve the agenda of censoring everybody. We all have to become so politically, socially correct that we cannot express any opinion that doesn't fall in those mediocre terms of we have to tell everybody, oh you're beautiful, oh you're amazing. We can't express any any thoughts, any judgment, any different opinion because that immediately becomes that immediately becomes um, straying away from from the social norm. We are not encouraged to have independent, independent thinking. As a child, I was a very independent thinker, and I encourage everybody to always question, especially the popular movements. Everything has to be reevaluated. Question. Never taking 
at face level. Everything has to be questioned. Why are we all meant right now to be so accepting of everything? Why? Because censorship is the umbrella under which all of this is happening. It's very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate it's disconnecting us from actual love. Um, those are my thoughts on it. I can keep going, but I, I think I made my point about self-love. Self-love is forgetting about yourself and um, going deep. <laughs> really, really understanding who you are. And it, it is not about not completely caring about yourself. Not at all. It's just how you do it. We all have ego. It, we have to befriend it. We can't fight it and we can't allow it to expand massively. It has to, we have to, we have to befriend the ego. We have to work with it, not against it and not under it. It expanding and we becoming nothing, just the ego, which is very common nowadays. We have to befriend it. It's okay to have ego because without ego, you you just spill like water with no vessel. You need the ego. And with, as I mentioned, with astrology, your sun, what people call the zodiac sign, it's a good representation of your ego. You have to look at your sun's sign, your sun's house, where your sun is positioned, and aspects to your sun to understand a little more about your persona in this life. Uh, my sun is in Aries, which means I do need to develop my ego. I need to develop interest in myself. I need to develop some form of selfishness, meaning just understanding my entity, because in previous lives, or in previous evolution, I was Pisces, or the Pisces energy, which means I was too dissolved, too much part of the whole, too, too dissolved, yes. And my son is in 12th house, which is the Pisces house of complete merging with the um, with the divine, with the universal love, etc. So you understand, nothing is, I'm not a pure Aries. There is a lot to that statement. So if you say I'm a Virgo, no, there is so much more to it. There's so much more to it. The more you dig, the deeper it gets. Astrology is so both exact and endless, so it's the opposite of exact. It's exact and it's also so expansive it's both it's amazing anyways um i understand a lot of psychology through astrology so if you're interested if you have innate if you have deep interest in astrology go for it because you will learn a lot about your own self in a very philosophical way thinking about yourself as um, ideas and philosophy is very different from thinking about yourself um, empty, I, uh, I feel like I move through my day with an empty mind, I don't see and judge myself, I don't think, oh my god, I'm not beautiful enough, it's okay, I'm not supposed to be beautiful, I don't think I'm not smart enough, no, I'm, I'm like a child, no, I think I'm pretty smart, I'm, I like my mind, I like my company, so, I just move through the day thinking, oh, I have, I'm going to do this now, I'm washing a dish, yes, washing a dish, uh, stuff like that. Maybe I think about an idea, a joke, a project, a plan, etc. Those are the thoughts. Um, I'm walking, okay, I'm walking. You get my point about emptiness. There is no inner dialogue. Oh, I said this, this, should I have said this? Well, none of that. It's useless and it's pointless and it doesn't enrich you. So, I love you guys.